You're listening to Three Things to Know with Stephanie Haney, with experts and insiders on what you need to know in Northeast Ohio. Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to the Three Things to Know podcast. I'm your host, Stephanie Haney, coming to you from the heart of downtown Cleveland. That's where WKYC Studios is here in Northeast Ohio, the NBC affiliate, Channel 3 News. And with all of that said, you know that this is a Northeast Ohio focused podcast. That's what we try and talk about here, things that are important to people here in Northeast Ohio and Ohio in general. So that's why today we have a special guest. We have Lieutenant Governor John Houston joining us to talk about things that are critically important here in Ohio, here in Northeast Ohio and around the state. And some of those things that we're going to talk about today include programs that are available for businesses. You know, the businesses in our state have been hit very hard as they have been around the country by the pandemic. And our state has some things available in order to prop those businesses up. So we're going to talk about those programs with the lieutenant governor. We're also going to talk about supporting the people here in Ohio. You might, you might not necessarily be aware if you're a young person who's listening to this podcast about the opportunities that are available to you at the junior high and the high school level where you can get training. And even beyond the high school level, by the way, even as adults, where you can get training that is free of charge and actually helps you earn money, especially if you're uh, in a junior high or high school and you're doing something that can get you college credit if you do end up going on to college. That's something that I benefited from when I was in high school. I took those AP classes. I was able to get college credit. Saved me a lot of money in the long run. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. And then, you know, your viewer and listener questions are a huge part of this podcast. So there are some things that we want to talk to the lieutenant governor about that you have raised issues. You know, I'll often tweet out when I've got a guest coming on and you'll tell me what questions you'd like me to ask that guest. Well, some of the responses that I got were overwhelmingly in support of asking a couple questions about the redistricting here in Ohio. That's a huge conversation right now with the latest census data coming out and how the new district lines will be drawn for the people who will represent us here in the state of Ohio at the local and at the national level. Also, lots of questions about mask mandates. It's a very controversial issue. It's something that the Ohio House and Senate have not necessarily wanted to work hand in hand with, with the governor and the lieutenant governor. So we're going to talk about that and the state of the Republican Party overall here in Ohio, because right now we are at a time where the governorship and the lieutenant governorship and the Ohio House and the Ohio Senate are all controlled by Republicans. But you wouldn't necessarily know it if you take a look at their working relationship. So we're going to talk to him a little bit about that. And of course, we cannot let him out of here without finding out where his true allegiances lie when it comes to Ohio's football teams. So we will also ask him that very specific question coming from one of you, one of our listeners, one of our viewers. So you ask, you shall receive. We will ask Governor, Lieutenant Governor Houston very specifically about that. And so without further ado, let's bring him in. Let's get your questions answered. Let's find out how the state is supporting businesses and people here in Ohio and sort of the lay of the political land between the House of the Governor and the Lieutenant Governor and also our legislature here in Ohio. Let's bring him in right now. Lieutenant Governor Houston, thank you so much for joining me on the Three Things to Know podcast. Great to be with you. Now, we're here to talk about something that a lot of people have at the top of their minds right now. Business in Ohio, a lot of people concerned what we are doing here in Ohio to help a lot of people out of what has been a very tough time. So tell me a little bit about what's going on here in Ohio to help and support these people. Well, right now, the economy in Ohio has recovered faster than the national economy. Um, we have, uh, we're at the lowest point of unemployment that we've had since the beginning of the, the pandemic. Uh, we're creating jobs in some cases faster than we can find people to fill them. We've had a number of companies from the coasts who have relocated operations to Ohio. Also is the global supply chain uh, is making it difficult to get products from overseas. Many companies are relocating their production facilities in the United States, in the Midwest, Ohio is getting a disproportionate share of those wins. And so the economy is recovering at a pretty brisk pace. Well, that is something that we like to hear and we wanna know how we can support those businesses here in Ohio. Tell me about what's going on with the latest launch of the Industry Sector Partnership Grants. Yeah, the Industry, industry Sector Partnership Grants are really important because they help educators get connected with business so that they're training 
people for the jobs that are being created in the economy, that businesses have the incentive to partner because they, they get more talent uh, into their workplace. And what we're doing at the state level is we're facilitating those relationships. We want educators to know what businesses need. We want businesses to help them uh, recruit students and, and give them the kind of training they need to be successful. These partnerships work very well and it's important uh, it is so important because as technology is getting infused into every aspect of the economy, we need not only our high school students and our college students to graduate with the right kinds of skills, but we need to upskill the existing workforce, meaning people who are already out there. You may have a job. Technology may change that job. We want to help you get that next level of skill so that you can earn more, have more job security, and the businesses have the talent they need to succeed. You know, I can attest to that as someone who recently went back to school. I went to back to grad school back in 2015 to get my master's in journalism. I was blown away by all the tech training that we got even in the journalism field. The fact that we're talking here, you know, from a setup, I'm at home, we're over Zoom, I have multiple things running. You know, I, it's just, it's important. And I think people understate that importance. And I know something you have spoken about is championing, supporting tech here in Ohio, especially we got those companies coming in from the coast. So tell me a little more specifically about some of the things we have going on here in Ohio, the tech cred and the IMAP programs. Yeah. So if, if any of your viewers are saying, you know, Hey, I want to, I want to upskill. I want to earn a new skill. I want to, I want to get better. We have programs that will help you do that. Tech cred is one of them. It's it's sister program. IMAP. We will basically pay you to get retrained. Uh, we will pay uh, up to three thousand dollars with the IMAP program, up to two thousand dollars with the TechCred program, to help you earn an industry-recognized certification. Many of these are tech credentials. Many of them can be done online, uh, and you pick the provider. Uh, you uh, you go get the skill and then we reimburse you for the cost of, of what it takes to earn that. Sometimes that can be done in weeks uh, and, uh, or shorter. And, and these, are, these, are, these lead to great jobs. Right now in Ohio, on ohiomeansjobs.com alone, we have over 200,000 jobs available, but more than 122,000 of them pay $50,000 a year or more. And this is the kind of training that you can get in a matter of days, weeks, that will help you qualify for one of those, or maybe even make a career switch if you want to do that. Uh, this is what we have here in Ohio. So I encourage people to look up our programs, TechCred, uh, IMAP, I-M-A-P. Uh, you can use your search engine, track those down and uh, see what's out there for you. you. And by the way, don't be intimidated by tech. You mentioned, uh, uh, Stephanie, that you went back to, to, to school uh, and, and there's a lot of new technology in your business. You learned it pretty quickly, didn't you? It's something that even if you're not tech savvy, you can learn to do these things because of the way our, everything from robotics to uh, the internet of things works. Uh, we can all do this. Absolutely, and if you get confused, I will tell you what, there is no substitute for a YouTube video because somebody out there who has also had a hard time with it is explaining it in a different way. Now, let's uh, talk about education and the role that plays in the larger workforce, the economic scope here in Ohio. People need to be thinking about that. Yes, it's great to think about it. It's know that we ha to know we have these programs available if you want to make a change later in life. I'm also a big proponent. Everyone listening, it is never too late, but also never too early, right? So let's talk about some of the things for people who are still in high school. Yeah, well, you know what? We're even started earlier than that. We want kids in junior high to be exposed to the opportunities that are available. And then when you get to high school, you can make a smart choice, whether that is a a college track that you want to take, well, you can start earning college credits when you're in high school. There are many students who are graduating high school also with an associate's degree in their back pocket or college credits in their back pocket that will make college less expensive for you. So you can do that. Then we also have our career centers, our career minded uh, schools that will help you earn industry credentials. In many cases, allow you to work while you're in high school, start to put some money away. And, and literally you, we sort of get that diploma on a Saturday. I've talked to so many kids that got a diploma on Saturday and we're going to go to work on Monday because they had already, they'd already made a relationship with the business. They're doing this through their career centers. So we have a variety of options, whether it's a career path or a college path or a blended path, because many students in our career centers 
who may be learning to be a cybersecurity specialist, a CNC machinist, uh, trained in robotics, are earning industry credentials and college credits at the same time so that you can keep both of those paths open. I'll tell you what, it's not a bad idea for keeping those student loans down too. Uh, I, I have to speak on my experience as well in this. I took college credits when I was in my junior and senior year of high school. I was able to graduate undergrad. I don't say this to brag, I say this to talk about budgeting your money a year early. And it, you know, it takes four years for a lot of people. It's not because I did anything special or anything great other than taking those classes in high school, which then gives you more, of course, spending power in the economy and it all just kind of rolls in together. Yeah, you're a living, breathing example of success that can come with that. I mean, I've talked to so many, I mean, I literally, I, I'll give you a great example. There was a student that I met who had, who had earned every robotics credential he could earn while he was in high school. He also was graduating with an associate's degree in high school. He went to work right out of high school, making over $60,000 a year for an international manufacturing company who is then going to pay for his last two years to help him earn his uh, electrical engineering degree. Boom, that is free college right there. That is a career pathway that is available for you free of charge in Ohio, thanks to the generosity of the taxpayers of the state. You just gotta take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Well, I love that we're letting people know about these programs that are available. Again, the website the lieutenant governor mentioned there, ohiomeansjobs.com. Now, I want to get to some of our viewer questions. It's a contentious time here in Ohio when we're talking about the jobs and the businesses. A lot of that has to do with the COVID-19 pandemic. A lot of people, you know, have noticed that the state house not exactly being cooperative with the governor and of course and your, you know, moves at the highest level here in Ohio. Do you think that it's the right move to stop short of ordering, when we talk about schools, the kind of mask mandates that we've seen people call for? Because the state house will overrule them, but do you think that's the right move? Well, I do at this stage in the pandemic because we kind of all know what the deal is. We know that vaccines are the most important thing you can do. If you, if you go in and you look at the data, you see in communities, you can literally see blocks where communities are highly vaccinated they have very low rates of transmission they have very few problems in their schools uh and and so we're really trying to promote the vaccination piece of this because that's ultimately what works uh, a mask is the next level down a mask can help if you're unwilling to get vaccinated to help slow it but you know one of the things i love about ohio is that you can find a place to live that suits your values suits what what you what you want to do where you want to live and some people live in communities where they are, you know, embrace the idea of wearing masks. Other people live in communities where they rebel against the idea of wearing masks. Uh, we just give people the information. We localize the, we localize um, that information, and we support the decisions that local superintendents are make based on the culture of their school and and what people are willing to do. Everybody knows what the deal is right now. I mean, I I don't think that there's anybody out there that that doesn't know um, what the facts are. They may choose to believe disinformation. They may choose to not embrace the facts. They may choose to overreact to the facts. What Governor DeWine are, and I are really trying to do is stay focused on, on what the truth is, what we know. From the very beginning of the pandemic, when we were doing the, the daily two o'clock briefings, I've always had people ask me, it's like, well, did you give us all the information? I'm telling you, everything we knew, we gave it to you. And, and uh, we're at a p pace, though, we're at a point now where literally uh, I think people are pretty informed about what they can do to protect themselves, and, and we've got to leave that to their choice. There is certainly no shortage of information out there from reputable medical professionals, that's for sure. It's, it is a contentious talk time. To your, by the way, talk to your local doctor. Talk mm -hmm. to, don't, don't, you don't have to listen to the talking heads. You don't even have to listen to me. Talk to your doctor. What does your doctor say you should do? What does your local hospital say you should do? These are the people that know what's going on, that know what's going on in your community. Listen to them. Yes, lots of opportunity to go straight to the source. Absolutely. Now, politically speaking, do you think since it is such a tough time now working with the state house that the Republican Party can be healed and work more, co more cohesively here in the future here in Ohio? Oh, of course. I mean, this is this is how it's supposed to work. I mean, Republicans run the, the House and the Senate and all the statewide offices, uh, the constitutional offices, and and um, sometimes we have to disagree. When you're 
you know, a majority is made up of many voices. You, you have to, you have uh, sometimes consent to contentious conversations, but in the end, everybody knows what their responsibility is. Everybody has a different, everybody has a different constituency to answer to. Uh, and uh, the governor and I have to answer to the entire constituency of the state of Ohio. That's why we have a, a perhaps a little more balanced approach in how we're doing things. And maybe an individual member of the legislature has who represents a, a, a district that has a, a stronger uh, point of view in a certain direction. So we, we work, we work at, literally, I talked with the Speaker of the House two days ago, the Senate president yesterday. We work through our issues. Okay. Speaking of many voices, this is still a conversation today in 2021. You are the former Secretary of State of Ohio. So in that role, you were charged with keeping our elections free and fair. Some people still uh, questioning this. Can you confirm that our 2020 election here in Ohio was fair and safe? Uh, when I was Secretary of State, I made it easy to vote and hard to cheat. Uh, Secretary LaRose, who's succeed, succeeded me, is pursuing that same agenda. And Ohio's elections, you could have a great deal of confidence in them. Uh, the elections in Ohio were fair. Uh, they were well run. Uh, uh, I used to do a post-election audit uh, of voter fraud and voter suppression. We found hundreds of cases of attempted voter fraud most of those people were never successful at casting a vote and zero cases where somebody who wanted to vote who was denied that opportunity. Our system works in Ohio. It is easy to vote. It's hard to cheat. Um, and uh, you should have confidence in what we do here. I hope other states, though, will follow our model, the way we do things, because uh, the states run elections. The federal government doesn't run elections. Each state does their own thing. Uh, and our state does a great job. This is a huge conversation right now when it comes to elections. The redistricting process here in Ohio, you know, changing those lines here in the state. Would you call our current state and Senate districts fair and proportional? Well, the current state districts were drawn under a different set of rules, and those were um, the, those districts were drawn uh, by the majority party and they were done constitutionally. Uh, certainly they favored the people who drew, who drew the map. Uh, that's the, that's the, uh, the circumstance that we've lived under. We've since amended the constitution in the state of Ohio, and uh, we went through that process over the course of the last week. It was very contentious. Unfortunately, it didn't end up in a bipartisan vote, which I know Governor DeWine and I were hoping for, uh, but I do think it had, a, I do think the new constitutional uh, um, rules had an impact because ultimately uh, even the republicans in the legislature conceded at least five house seats and a couple of senate seats uh toward the goal of drawing a more balanced map now i understand that there are democrats who still don't think it, it was a balanced map uh, but this is a more republican leaning state than it was 10 years ago makes doing that a, a little more complicated but uh even you, you know, from the original map that Republicans introduced, uh, you saw them move it more toward uh, a, a Democrat goal, uh, which shows that at least this new constitutional amendment had some impact. And we'll see if the court validates that decision. Uh, and um, but it, 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 just to give you some insight, it's very difficult. The the the, the constituencies that that are are um, influential with the Senate president and the Speaker of the House versus the minority leader and and uh, of the House and the Senate. They have very different constituencies. And what we saw in this process is that, that they could only go so far. Uh, their constituencies would only allow them to go so far toward a compromise. Ultimately, we weren't able to get there. But we'll, um, I think that we did see that there was an impact of the constitutional change that forced Republican legislators to move a little bit more toward the middle. Well, I think that people do often forget the job of our representatives is to speak for the people who they represent. That is a fair point. Assuming this new plan doesn't get validated by the court, is there anything specific that you would like to see if it goes back to the drawing board to redraw these districts right now? Uh, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see what the court says. Uh, I, 
I, I don't know. I have no particular guess or, or prediction on what that will be. Uh, it's a new process. Uh, people can read the same words and come up with different conclusions. I mean, one of the things that I found from the conversation that was going on was that was that even outside groups and Democrats and Republicans thought that thought their reading of the Constitution was that, OK, well, Democrats deserve this many seats and Republicans deserve this many seats. Uh, and that's balance. I, I don't I don't think that's what we voted for. I think what we voted for was that, yes, we recognize there are going to be a certain number of Democratic seats, certain number of Republican seats, but they wanted us to draw more competitive seats. You don't see in any anybody's version of the map a an attempt to create more competitive seats, uh, which is, I think, what the voters of Ohio want more of. And I don't think either the Democratic map or the Republican map met that goal by my standard. But again, this is a collaborative process. I don't get to, I didn't have a vote, um, uh, but I would have been very involved in redistricting reform for more than you know two decades. And so uh, I, I just offer that perspective as something that if, if there is a redo, uh, I would encourage uh, maps that look, that have more competitive seats. I think it would just be simpler for the people drawing the districts if they were recognizable shapes. That would definitely that would well. You, you, you want to know what you want to know what the problem is with that is that the Constitution actually says you can't break up communities mm. uh, to some extent. Well, city jurisdictional lines are really crazy. It's not like they're built on square, you know, square or geometrical shapes that we're accustomed to. They're very jagged lines that outside say that the. Uh, the city of Cincinnati, the city of Columbus, the city of Cleveland, these are very large jagged lines that go all over the place. So when you try to keep a community together, you have to draw a district that represents that. Mm, also a good point. All right, speaking of Cincinnati and Cleveland, specifically Lieutenant Governor John Houston, you're a big football guy. You played at the University of Dayton. Here is a pressing question from our listeners. If the Browns and the Bengals make it to the playoffs, who are you rooting for? Who am I rooting for? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, you're tearing me apart, but I'm gonna have, are... to, I'm, I'm gonna have to say the Browns, you know? I got so many family ties to the Browns uh, and uh, and I really think they have a chance this year to play in the Super Bowl, but I'm excited to see what Joe Burrow's doing. The fact that the Bengals are actually, um, you know, they got, they, got a, they got a team again. They got a team that can be competitive and uh, I will tell you this. How about if I say I want the Browns to win this year, next year, and then give the Bengals two years to build the team and then have them win the two years following that so that we can have a run of Ohio Super Bowl victors. Hey, that doesn't sound bad. I will tell you what, you know, I hope Joe Burrows gets all healed up, gets healthy. Loved seeing a p competitive game between the Browns and the Bengals, and I do hope that we have that for years to come, and I think we have the makings for it. So, I do too. I think it's, I think it's pretty exciting. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you for your time today, Lieutenant Governor John Houston. We really appreciate you coming on the Three Things to Know podcast. Great. Great to be with you. Very diplomatic answer from Lieutenant Governor Houston on uh, who he's supporting in the playoffs at the Browns and the Bengals meet. But I will say being here in Northeast Ohio, I like how he started the answer to that question. All right, let's talk about what you need to know in NEO. And we are playing right along with the information that we got from the governor. What you need to know in NEO is about that website, ohiomeansjobs.com. Now, you might be wondering, .com? Is it not a government program? But if you type in ohiomeansjobs.com, it redirects you to the .gov website, which is the government-run website. But it's a redirect. The .gov website is a much longer, messier URL. So if you just put in ohiomeansjobs.com, it'll take you there. And then you can learn more about the programs that Lieutenant Governor Houston talked about here today. Resources for people who are looking for work. You can post your resume on that website. Also for employers who are looking for people to hire. They can search those resumes that are posted and find talent to fill positions that they need to fill, which we do know. There is a shortage of people, you know, filling certain jobs here in Ohio. So they have the opportunity to do that. And also students. Students can go to ohiomeansjobs.com to find part-time work, apprenticeships, internships. Just checking the website, by the way, which this data is updated periodically. But as of September 20th, there were almost 235,000 jobs listed on ohiomeansjobs.com. You might be thinking, oh, some of those are probably jobs that I don't necessarily want to take. Well, at least... 
almost 131,000 of those jobs, like in the ballpark of 131,000 of those jobs had a salary of over $50,000. That's a significant amount of money. That'll get you pretty far here in the Ohio area. And if you're someone who's looking for an internship, there were about 3,500 internships listed on ohiomeansjobs.com. So lots of opportunity there to learn about things here in the state of Ohio. Look, our taxes are paying for these programs, so you might as well be aware of them and take advantage of them because truly, they are great opportunities for people. There are opportunities available. Sometimes we just got to look for them and sometimes we don't know where to look. So a great place to start is ohiomeansjobs.com. And if it's a little intimidating to you to go to the website and kind of take a look around, Ohio Means Jobs is also a good follow this week. They're a good follow on Twitter. The Twitter account is just Ohio Means Jobs. So you can go right there. You can follow it out. They tweet out links to information on different kinds of jobs that are in high demand in the Ohio area and also events like career fairs where you can go and learn about even more job opportunities that might be available if that's something that you're looking for. They also repost things from the different accounts for the city and county level organizations that are tapped into Ohio means jobs like for example the Cleveland Cuyahoga County sector of Ohio means jobs it's got its own Twitter account so they repost things from that it's a great resource whether you're going to ohiomeansjobs.com or you're following Ohio means jobs on Twitter great place to stick your little toe in get more information find out about the programs that are available here in Ohio because there really are a lot of them that's part of what we do here on the three things to know podcast is let you know about things that are important here in Ohio and that you might not know about so that you can take advantage of them and that's it for your three things to know podcast this week thank you so much for being here if you enjoyed or learned something or think that you might want to pass this on to somebody else I would greatly appreciate it and also if you would subscribe and leave a rating and a review because that does help us connect with people here in Northeast Ohio. I'd love to hear some feedback on what you think. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what you want to hear about, what you'd like to have us talk about, who would be a great guest. What's something that you need to know in NEO or who is a good follow on social media here in the Northeast Ohio area. Let me know any and all of that, all about creating a dialogue with each and every one of you. And I would love nothing more than to hear from you. You can always shoot me a DM at underscore Stephanie Haney. That's on Twitter and on Instagram. And with that, I will see you next week with more Three Things to Know. Thanks for listening to Three Things to Know with Stephanie Haney from WKYC Studios. Subscribe now to stay in the know.